So in this video, we're going to be making a procedural map generator in Godot, and this is going to be for things like dungeons. So what you see in the background is kind of the result you're going to be getting, and it's super easy to add additional steps to this to kind of polish things up if you'd like to do that in the future. But yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so looking at my project setup, the only things you're going to need is obviously a sprite sheet. I have a super basic one with like a floor and a ceiling tile, I guess. And then you'll obviously need a game scene or something similar where we can actually place the generator. And inside of the scene, I just added a tile map layer. It has a tile set attached to it and inside of this tile set I just set up my basic tiles now we will need to look at the atlas coordinates and stuff to draw the correct tiles later on but that's just the basic setup now to make the generator we want to go into like a scripts folder and just make a new script and I'm just going to call this walker generator and it can inherit from node that's fine now inside of the script I'm going to give it a class name just so that we can create it from the Godot editor so I'm going to say class name and just type walker generator there and I also want to be able to execute the generation inside of the editor so I'm just going to go to the top and type the at symbol and the tool annotation and this will allow the code to run inside of the editor now we're going to make a couple initial properties at the top so i'm going to make one which is an export variable and this is going to be called map dimensions this is just going to be a vector 2i i for integer and this is obviously just the size of the map now i'm going to set the default for this one to something like a vector 2i and we'll do 40 by 40 and then we're going to make another variable which is going to be another export variable and this one's going to be called total steps and this is going to be an integer I'm going to default it to 600 and this one is how many steps the generator is going to take and this is going to make more sense if I kind of explain how the generator will work uh, really briefly. So basically what it's going to do is we obviously have the dimensions. Let's say we had the dimensions about here. Pretend this is a rectangle. The generator is going to fill this rectangle with wall tiles, which is the black. And then it's going to take a floor tile and start at the center of our room. And then it's just going to start carving away at the wall tiles with the floor tiles. And this is what's going to create the dungeon. And the way it carves through these tiles is by basically just picking a random direction, moving in that direction and then repeating the process. So maybe it picked this direction, this direction, and kind of just draws randomly. And it will end up drawing a full dungeon room, obviously, like I showed at the start of the video. The benefit of doing it this way is obviously that for dungeons, all of the rooms are going to be connected by default, which is kind of helpful that you don't need to do like a connect islands step in your generator. It's kind of just built in by default. So the steps variable, like I just created in the script, is how many steps it will take, obviously. Now we're just gonna use these variables for now, but we're gonna add a few more later, obviously. Next up I'm going to define the ready function because inside of the ready function we want to actually generate the map. So right here I'm going to type the generate map function and then this obviously isn't defined yet so I'm going to type it down here. I'll say func generate map and this is going to just return void and we're going to pass for now. We also want to trigger this generate map function from the editor so I'm going to make a tool button by typing at export underscore tool button. The text of this one will be generate map and then I'll type var map gen button and we're going to set it equal to this generate map function. That way, whenever we click this exported tool button, it's going to call this generate map function. So now that we have the class created, let's actually just add that node in so that we can start visualizing it. I'm going to go to my scene tree, just add in a new node, and we're going to search for walker generator, just add this node in. And you can see we have all the export properties and also that generate map button, which is going to correspond to this function. Now to do any sort of generation on a tile map layer, we obviously need a reference to it. So I'm going to define another export variable. We're going to call this one tile map layer and set the type of it to the tile map layer class that way we'll get an export property on the generator and we can now assign the tile map layer node reference now from the generate map function the first thing we want to do is draw that big rectangle of wall tiles so that we can start carving away at it so to do that i'm going to make just a helper function we're going to make one called draw tile rect this will require the dimensions of the rectangle so i'm going to type dimensions as an argument it will be a vector 2i and then it's going to require the source id and the tile coordinates of the tile that we want to draw the rectangle with so we'll say source id int and then also at Atlas chords, which is a vector 2i. I'm going to zoom out a bit here, but this function is going to return void. And then this function will just loop through an x and y coordinate to get that rectangle and basically just fill in all the tiles inside of those ranges. So it's literally just going to be for x in range dimensions.x. Inside of here, we'll say for y in range dimensions.y. And for each tile in this rectangle, we're going to call tile map layer dot set cell we're going to set the cell at the coordinates of x and y making sure to type this as a vector the source id will just be source id and the atlas chords 
will just be atlas chords, which are gonna be passed through into this function somewhere else. Now we can use this function in the generate map function up here as the first step that our generator will take. So instead of passing here, I just wanna type draw tile rect. And for the dimensions, we're gonna just pass in the map dimensions, which is the export variable up here. But for the source ID and the Atlas chords, it's gonna be kind of different. Now, if you're not familiar, this obviously refers to what tile we're going to be drawing. So if I open up like my tile set editor here, you can see that hovering over these, I have a source of zero and an atlas coordinate for each tile. This is zero, zero, this is one, zero, and so on. It's just X and Y coordinates. Now, I personally don't like just putting magic numbers into my code everywhere. So I do like to have these defined in like a, a file or a specific variable so that I can look them up by like the name of the tile. And I personally find that a lot easier and more modular. And that's what we're gonna set up next. So basically what I wanna do is keeping this tile set editor open. I'm just gonna ignore this warning here for a second, but I'm going to go to the top and I'm gonna make a new constant and we're gonna call this tile underscore data. Now this is going to be a dictionary and it will basically just hold all of our tiles by name and inside of those tile datas, we're going to have their Atlas coordinates and also their source ID. So I really only have two tiles. So the first one is gonna be called floor, which is my floor tile. This will be a dictionary in and of itself. And inside of here, I'll say source ID, which we know that's zero. And for the Atlas coordinates, which I'll just type Atlas chords. This is going to be the floor tile in my tile set. So it's at zero, zero. And this is obviously going to change depending on your tile set, but you can obviously get this by just hovering over the tile and it pops up there. Now I'm going to duplicate this entry just like so. And the next tile that we have is the wall tile. The source ID for this one is also zero, but the vector position or the Atlas coordinate is going to be zero, one. So I'm just going to change this to a one. And then I also need a comma at the end of these two lines. And this is all we need for floors and walls, basically a data container that just holds two tile data blocks. Now using this constant, I can now tell my draw tile rectangle function which tile I want to use for the walls. So as the second argument, we know that's the source ID. And just to be consistent, I'm going to say tile data, which is our constant dot wall dot source ID. And for the third argument, which is the atlas coordinates of the tile, it will be the same thing. So tile data dot wall dot atlas chords. So with this setup, we can now test out the first part of the generation. So if I click on my walker generator and I hit the generate map button, it will give us a big black square here. And you can obviously change the size of this. The total steps is what we need to implement next. And that's for the actual walker. So back in the script, we want to scroll down a bit and I'm going to make a bunch of new lines so that you guys can read this easily, but we will make a new function. And this one is going to be called draw walker generation. This is going to have a similar argument structure to the above function. So I'm actually just going to copy this from the function we just made and paste those arguments into here. But I'm going to add one more argument, which I'm just going to call padding. And this is going to be an integer. Now, again, this is kind of hard to see, but this function will return void. So you can just type that at the end. But inside of this function, the first thing we want to do is define a list of directions that we can move in. So I'm going to make a new var called directions. It's going to be an array and I will set it equal to a new array, which is going to contain vector directions. So I'll just say vector two dot left, vector two dot right, vector two dot up, and also vector two dot down. We'll need a variable to store the current position that we're carving away at the walls with. And this is going to be a vector two i and i want to initialize it at the center of the map so we have to set this equal to a new vector 2i and inside of here the x position is going to be floor of dimensions dot x divided by 2.0 and then we can copy this for the y position i'm actually just going to draw this across multiple lines so that you guys can read it easier but the y position is going to be the same thing but obviously we get the y axis of the vector instead and then we also want to define the boundaries for the generator so that it can't generate outside of our base rectangle so i'm going to make one more variable called bounds. This one's going to be a rect 2i, and I'm going to set it to a new rect 2i, which will be positioned at 0, 0, but the size will just be dimensions.x and dimensions.y. Now from here, we can use this padding argument that we made earlier. Basically, my idea is like, if you put a bit of padding around the generation, then it won't generate all the way to the edge of the map, which is kind of just a helpful thing to have. So to use this padding, there's probably a better way to do it, but the easiest way is just to loop through every side in an array. And this array is just gonna use the built-in constants that Godot provides, which is gonna be side left, side right, side top, and side bottom. And then for each iteration, we're just gonna say bounds is equal to bounds dot grow side and the side we're going to grow is just side and we're going to grow it 
the opposite direction, which is shrinking it, I guess. So we're going to just say negative padding, and that will shrink the rectangle towards the center based on the padding around the edges. So now we can kind of get to the bulk of the code, and this is going to be one last for loop. We're just going to say for i in range, and we're going to make a loop that loops through the amount of steps in the generator, which we made a variable for. It's called total steps. So for i in range, total steps. Now, if our bounds, which is the rectangle that we have to stay within, dot has point current position. So if that point is within the boundaries, then we can actually set that cell and we're going to set it to the floor, but we're going to define that later. So I'm just going to call tile map layer dot set cell and we're going to pass in the current position as the coordinates for this cell. And then we can just say source ID and Atlas chords like we did above. Now after this if statement, so I'm going to tab back one, we're going to make two new variables, which we're going to use to check if the next position is safe and also within bounds. So the first one is going to decide a move direction whenever we iterate through this loop we want to pick a new random move direction so I'm gonna make this one a vector 2i and I'm gonna set it equal to the directions array dot pick random this way we'll try to move in a random direction but obviously if that's out of bounds then we want to pick a new direction so we have to calculate the next position to check that we're gonna make a new variable called next position this will also be a vector 2i and I'm gonna set this equal to the current position plus the move direction now down here I'm going to make a new if statement so I'll say if bounds dot has point next position, then that means the next tile is safe. So we can update our current position to be equal to that next position. If that's not the case, so else, then this would mean we are out of bounds. So we have to pick a new direction. So what I'll do here is shuffle the directions array with directions dot shuffle, then I'll loop through all the directions. So we can say for D in directions. And basically, we're just checking if that direction is safe, then we'll choose the direction and break early. So if bounds dot has points current position plus D then current position plus equals D and from here we can just break now this is all we need for the walker generation function the final step is actually calling this so I'm gonna scroll up to the generate map function here and after we draw that initial tile rectangle I want to do uh, draw walker generation same thing where we're passing in the map dimensions, but I also want to pass in a padding. So I'm actually just going to make a new export variable so we can define the padding in the inspector. So I'll go here and I'll say at export var and I'll call this one boundary padding and it's going to be an int and I'll set it equal to four by default. And we're going to use this in the walker generation function. And then for the tile that we want to draw with this function, I'm going to copy this section from above because I don't want to type this whole thing out. And I'm actually going to put this on a new line just so that you guys can read it. But instead of drawing the wall tile, I'm just going to select this, hit Control D to select the next instance, and we're just going to type floor instead. This will draw the floor tile because it's using the floor's source ID and Atlas chords. Now there are a couple more cleanup steps that we have to do. So before we generate the map, we always want to make sure our tile map is completely cleared. So I can literally just call tile map layer dot clear. And then it would also be cool if we can randomize the generation seed, but also specify a specific generation seed so that we don't always get the same result in case we want to like debug something. Now, if you don't know how seeds work, that's kind of a topic for another video, but super like bare bones explanation the same seed, which is just an integer value, is always going to generate the same map in this case. So if we say like, hey, give it a seed of 15, our map is always going to be generated the exact same way with that seed of 15. So I'm going to make a new export variable for this at the top so that we can set it in the inspector again. I'll just call this one gen seed. It's going to be an integer and I'll set it equal to zero by default. I'll also make a Boolean checkbox just whether or not we want to randomize the seed. So I'm going to call this new export variable randomize seed and it will be a bool and we're going to set it equal to true. And to implement the seed, it's super basic. We just go into the generate map function and right at the top here, we can just say if randomize seed gen seed seed is equal to randi, which is a built in function. And then afterwards, we just call the seed function and pass in the gen seed. And that's all we need for the generator. So I'm going to hit control s to save go back into my scene. And sometimes for tool scripts, you do have to reload. So I'm just going to go to scene, reload saved scene just to make sure everything is initialized. And you can see it will generate automatically when it's ready. But I can go into my inspector here and just hit this generate map button. 
and it will start generating a map, which is super cool. Now, because we've added the padding, it won't generate all the way to the edge of the map, which is pretty handy to just have implemented, but I can obviously reduce this to zero and you can see it goes all the way to the edge sometimes, but you can kind of tweak these values however you want. Like if I went down to only 50 steps, we're gonna get a much simpler map. And then showcasing the seed thing, if we disable randomized seed, and again, like let's say I chose a seed of five, it will always generate the same map. It looks like nothing's happening, but it is regenerating and it's just using the same map because of how math works. So if you don't understand how seeds work, I would definitely look into that next because it is super interesting and pretty cool. But like I mentioned at the start of the video, this is a great system for any game that needs procedural dungeon generation. I think it's a great place to start. Um, don't get me wrong, I do think that this system needs a bit of tweaking. So this is where I kind of challenge you to take this a step further. So in the source files, which if you're a channel supporter, you get access to all the source files in the Discord, but I did include this wall tile, which I know I called these tiles ones wall tiles those are more like ceiling tiles this is a wall tile and ideally if this was like a full game i'd probably want to draw these um, along the edge of the ceiling you can kind of see where i'm what i'm going for here with the look but like this would make it feel more like a dungeon and this is obviously possible but you would want to run like another step that essentially scans for like the top layer of tiles and then places these wall tiles in on that top layer it's a bit more in depth but it is going to be super straightforward if you understand how the existing generator works. But if you have any questions about this system, please let me know in the comments. You can also join the Discord server and I'll try to respond there if you guys are wondering about anything with this code. But let me know what you guys wanna to see to take this a step further. I'm gonna start doing more like procedural generation videos, I think, um, kind of mixed in with the usual stuff because I'm working on like a super modular, very, very advanced uh, procedural map generator plugin for Godot. So it's not released yet, it's still kind of private, but I have kind of been showing it off in my streams recently when I'm working on my game, but it's going to allow for so much flexibility and I want to kind of make all the information what I've learned when developing that public. So expect more procedural generation stuff is I guess what I'm saying. Anyways though, that's it for this video. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And if you did enjoy the video, please subscribe. It is totally free and it helps the channel out a ton. And also be sure to check out the links in the description if you'd like to like join the Discord server or something. I wanna give a shout out to all the current channel supporters. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really helps out a ton. And exclusive shout outs go to Randall Lucini and also Denied Works. If you wanna help support the channel, I have links to that in the description as well, but you'll get various benefits like shout outs and also exclusive early access and the project files for all of my tutorials. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to check it out. But with that, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a great week and I will see you guys in the next one.